I will be presenting a uh, status of fisheries and aquaculture industry in northern Mindanao. Under the one-day approach, the vision of the Department of Agriculture is to have a food secure and resilient Philippines with empowered and prosperous farmers and fisher folk. And our mission is to empower farmers and fisher folk through collective action and attract private sector investment with inclusive agribusiness towards agricultural efficiencies, productivity, sustainability, and resilience. In particular, BIFAR is responsible for the development, improvement, management, and conservation of the country's fisheries and aquatic resources. Next slide, please. Based on the National Fisher Work Registration System, or the FISR, as of February 2017, there are about 66,359 registered fisher folk in the region from the different subsector categories such as aquaculture, municipal, commercial, fish processors, fish binding, and gleaners. Next slide, please. In terms of production areas in aquaculture sector, the region has 1,841 hectares of fish pan, 7 hectares of fish pen, 29 hectares of fish cages that includes our mariculture park areas, 250 hectares of seaweed farms, one hectare of massive farm, and less than half hectare of oyster farm. Next slide, please. In order to support our fisher folk engaged in aquaculture or fish farming activities, BIFAR established and currently operating the following production facilities. We have four technology outreach stations, namely, the Binoni Experimental Station located in Mayenu, Kamigin, the Silanga Experimental Station located in Tangub City, the Bangus Brini Station in Balyangao, in Misamis Occidental, and Manaobang Technology Station in Samis, Misamis Occidental. Next slide, please. We also have four hatcheries that are also located in Sabang Dalaga, Misamis Occidental, Sagay, Kamigin, Lala, Lanao del Norte, and Sumila, Bukinon. These facilities focus on the production of bangus and tilapia seedlings, fingerlings, with an annual production target of 5 million pieces of bangus by fingerlings and 18 million pieces of tilapia fingerlings to be distributed to the fish farmers in the region. Next slide, please. In the early 2000s, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BIFAR, introduced the Mariculture Park Program as a new approach and strategy in fish farming. With the help of national government agencies, the local government units, and other stakeholders, the establishment of Mariculture Park aims to improve the fish production of the mariculture industry in the region and contribute to food security through the development of mariculture park areas and its support facilities into a state-of-the-art or modernized mariculture park that allows the fisher folk and investor to operate in a cost-efficient way. In the region, we have two operational mariculture parks located in Balingasag, Misamis Oriental and Lupisaina in Misamis Occidental. Balingasag Mariculture Park was established on March 19, 2007 and is currently managed by the Executive Management Committee headed by the local chief executive in Balingasag, Misamis Oriental and before regional director. Bangus production in Balingasag, Mariculture Park was recorded as high as 2,509.66 metric tons with 136 fish cages on 2016. The facility also has a bangus processing component located near the Mariculture Park. Next slide, please. In Lupisaina, Misamis Occidental, the Mariculture Park was established on February 18, 2011. On 2014, the Lupisaina Mariculture Park contributed as high as 621.43 metric tons of fish production in the region, with a total of 175 fish kgs on 2014. Despite the promising contribution of the seed facilities in the overall fish production of the region, the facilities also experience challenges such as calamity, especially that the facilities are located in an open waters. Next slide, please. For the capture subsector, especially for our municipal fisher folk, BIFAR, with the help of the LGU, 
target to establish 48 units community based learning centers or the CFLCs located in a different coastal cities, municipalities in the region. The facility aims to, improve, to provide better force harvest handling and processing system and faster access to markets to reduce post harvest losses and increase income to our municipal fiscal flow. It also serves as skills training venue, community organizing and information generation, as well as monitoring of fish cuts and stocks assessment. The facility also have a post harvest equipment such as eight units pistol and two units test freezer that can be used by the organization in the day-to-day -day operation. Next slide, please. Our partner research institution, which is the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute, has an ongoing program to assess the stock in the country. The National Stock Assessment Program was conceptualized and implemented to provide standardized and continuous information on fishery resources. Like, for instance, fish catch statistics and biological information, which are fundamental for fisheries management. The program has provided information in support of numerous management strategies at various levels, whether local, regional, national, and or international. Our regional INSAP enumerators gather cuts and fishing effort data from INSAP identified major and minor landing sites in the region. Based on the data collected, the following fish groups are present in our fishing grounds, namely the oceanic and erratic tuna, small and large pelagics, demersal fishes, sharks and rays, as well as invertebrates. Next slide, please. Aside from the stocks, in supplementals also gather data on the type of fishing gears commonly used by municipal and commercial fishers in the region. Among the common gears used are the following gill net, multiple hook and line, jigger, fish coral, hook and line, bottom seat gill net, ring net, bag net, and driving net. Next slide, please. INSAP data collected reveals the following top 10 landed fish species in the region, which are the Bali sardines, drift fish, boletona, regetona, ox ice cad, skipjack tuna, big ice cad, flying fish, gold striped sardine, and mackerel scat. Next slide, please. On 2017, NFRDI released publication showing results of the INSAP data collected in the regions. As reflected on the map, fishes from Kamigin and Makalor Bay in Region 10, particularly neritic tunas and sardines, registered a high exploitation values. Exploitation values of neritic tuna, the oxys, let's say, and the oxys tarsan, had reached up to the exploitation value of 0.59, while sardines it is up to the exploitation value of 0.67. The map also suggests that Makalar Bay fishing ground continue to be subjected to unsustainable fishing activities. The land frequency analysis of Bali sardines in Makalar Bay pointed to high exploitation values, which also suggest continuous fishing pressures both above by increasing fishing effort and the availability of more efficient fishing gears that post major threat to the region's fish stocks. Recently, NFRDI released a resolution urging policymakers, leaders, and stakeholders to come up with management strategies to protect the species found exploited based on the actual data gathered. In Region 10, one species was found to be exploited, which is the sardines in the fishing ground of Makala Bay. Next slide, please. In Region 10, there are two subsectors which contribute to fish production. The aquaculture pertains to farming of fish and other fisheries products, while captured fisheries focuses on harvesting naturally occurring resources in both marine and freshwater environment. In 2020, both sectors contributed 50% on the overall regional fish production. Next slide, please. Capture fishery is subdivided into two. We have the municipal and commercial fishers. 
Commercial fisheries refer to fishing activities done in offshore waters using fishing vessels of more than three gross tons. And on municipal fisheries, it refers to fishing activities done in inland and coastal areas with or without the use of a fishing boat of up to three gross tons. Looking into the figure, 29% of the capture fishes production came from municipal fishing, while 21% of the capture production came from commercial fishing in 2020. And the top five species in the region include squid, sardines, reggae tuna, brown scab or galunggong, and big-eyed tuna. Next slide, please. Aquaculture sector contributed a total of 70,923 metric tons of fish production in 2020. And the following are top commodities being produced in the region. Mangrove crab, tiger prawn, milkfish, obangos, seaweeds, and tilapia. Next slide, please. The slide shows fish production trends in the region from 2015 to 2020 based on the uh, data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. As observed from the data, there is a decreasing trend of fish production which started from 2016 and on 2020. It dropped by 7% or about 10,992 metric tons as compared to the prior year. The observed decrease was mainly due to the impact of the pandemic where fishing activities were limited due to limited movement of people, fish worker involved and restricted flow of imports, for example, fuel, in the operation of fishing diesels, boats, and what aquaculture parts. Next slide, please. As the fish production drops, our fish efficiency level also exhibited a declining trend. Based on the 32.5 kilogram regional per capita consumption of the total population of the region, in consideration of the 1.6 annual population increase, the demand of fish food in the region is higher than it produced in 2018 to 2020. Hence, fish food sufficiency level dropped at 94 percent starting 2018, and in 2020, fish sufficiency level was at 87 percent only. Next slide, please. Aside from the declining fish production in the region, fish and folk experienced challenges, especially during the time of the pandemic. Before then, conducted the food security pre-summit activities to gather the following major challenges encountered by our fish and folk in the region. Number one, low rate of adoption and or limited access to technologies, lack of or limited technical knowledge of fisher folk and information on how to access credit and insurance from institutions. Number two, overexploitation of marine and fishery resources, such as overfishing, illegal fishing in marine waters, and intensified resource competition and conflict among fishers group and other economic sectors. Number three, inefficiencies along the supply chain and logistic support lack of market access and limited access to funding for appropriate infrastructure support facilities requirement. Number four, exacerbate effect of climate change and unmitigated disasters, calamities to the inherent vulnerabilities of the sector as well as pollution in coastal waters. Next slide, please. So, a rising con number five is a rising conflict and competition among municipal water users due to lack of zonation, delineation of municipal waters. Example is delineation of aquaculture areas to facilitate investment were also observed as well as lack of harmonized unified regulation and fisheries policies. Next slide, please. To address such challenges in the industry, BIFAR's interventions are regularly reviewed to adapt to the present need of the industry as it focuses on number one, intensified fisheries production through sustainable utilization of the fishery resource and good aquaculture practices. Number two, sustained restoration, conservation, protection, and management of fisheries and aquatic resources. Number three, 
provision of livelihood development programs. Number four, establishment of post service and infrastructure support. Number five, enhanced marketing support to promote integration of stakeholders in the fee supply chain. Number six, continuous capability building of fee support. Next slide, please. These are the specific interventions provided by BIFAR to the Fisher folk under the different programs. Next slide, please. Republic Act 10654, <clears throat> which amended the Fisheries Code of the Philippines, the Republic Act 8550, declares as a state policy the adoption of the precautionary principle and management of fishery and aquatic resources in a manner consistent with the concept of an ecosystem-based approach to fisheries management and integrated coastal management in specific natural fishery management areas. On January 28, 2019, the Department of Agriculture Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources issued Fisheries Administrative Order Number 263 or FEO 263, which established the 12 fisheries management areas covering all Philippine waters. It encouraged all coastal local government units as fisheries managers to take on shared responsibilities for the conservation and sustainable management of fishery resources. The FEO provides the location and boundaries of 12 delineated fisheries management areas, or what we call the FMAs, which were established based on consideration of tax boundary, range, and distribution of fisheries. It is a significant milestone in addressing illegal fishing and mainstreaming science-based management of fisheries as it directs all coastal government units to take on shared responsibilities for the conservation and sustainable management of shared fishery resources. Region 10 is part of the FME 9, which covers Bull Sea. As the lead region together with the June 7, 8, Nine and Caraga. The FMA aims to provide science-based participatory and transparent governance framework and mechanism to sustainably manage fisheries and ensure cooperation between local govern governments, national agencies, and stakeholders. Next slide, please. As part of the strategy, the Secretary William Dar highlighted the new thinking to level up agriculture and fisheries in the country. And the new thinking is built around eight paradigms. These are number one, modernization of agriculture. Number two, industrialization of agriculture is K. Number three, promotion of exports is a necessity. Number four, consolidation of small and medium-sized farms. Number five, infrastructure development would be critical. Number six, higher budget and investment for Philippine agriculture. Number seven, legislative support is needed. And number eight, road maps development is paramount. The vision of the Department of Agriculture, which is a food secure and resilient Philippines with empowered and prosperous farmers and peaceful, could be attained with a mission to collectively empower farmers and peaceful and the private sector to increase agricultural productivity and profitability, taking into account sustainability and resiliency. Next slide, please. The Department of Agriculture is the government agency responsible for promoting agricultural and fisheries development by providing the policy framework, public investments, and support needed for domestic and export-oriented business enterprise. Grounded on its mandate, it formulated the one-day approach, key strategies for transforming Philippine agriculture with four key strategies. That is consolidation, modernization, industrialization, and professionalization. These strategies envision to elevate the day's programs and policies towards a food secure and resilient Philippines with empowered and prosperous farmers and fisher folk. Specifically, there is a need to industrialize and conduct farm consolidation to achieve outcome at the regional level. Tighter horizontal integration of stakeholders with markets and industries along the value chain. Among the strategies are, number one, 
farm clustering and organizing fisher co cooperatives and associations into enterprise-based organizations for easy access to financial services and transfer of technology under the day into c2 and SAD programs number two establishment of marketing network number three implementation of value chain program and capability building of farmers on value adding activities number four establishment of new forms of linkages such as contact farming and corporate farming that will connect agro fisheries enterprises with markets and other upstream services continuous mainstreaming of climate change initiatives in the agency systems and process provide timely and site specific weather and climate advisories through advanced information and community technology and other early warning advisories and disaster risk management activities. Continuous rehabilitation and restoration of the country's major inland bodies of water to optimize the economic benefits, enhance fisheries towards sustainability, and repopulate indigenous species in support of biodiversity conservation and food sufficiency under the National Inland Fisheries Enhancement Program, the Balik Sigla Seilog at Lawa Program, or the Basel Program. Continuous capacity building of the local government units and stakeholders to provide extension support education and training to fisher folk, especially on the access to production capital through loan credit program the government with low or zero interest for the fisher folk borrowers. Next slide, please. Before I will end my presentation, I would like to show you our twin goals in the Department of Agriculture, the Masaga ng Ani at Mataas Nakita, as the Department of Agriculture's battle cry. Invasions to make marginalized Filipino farmers and people more prosperous with the goal of increasing their incomes. Modernization of Philippine agriculture and fisheries can be achieved with the use of relevant and innovative technologies and sustained empowerment and skills development of farmers, farmers and fisher folk. We hope that our leaders, policymakers, and stakeholders will find their ways to contribute to the same goals. Thank you very much and good afternoon once again. Okay, thank you so much, R.D. Teodoro A. Bacol. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us a clear picture of the situation of the fisheries and aquatic resources here in northern Mindanao. So now, sir, uh, let's move to the open forum. So we have several questions for you po today. So can we now proceed, sir, to the first question? The control in uh, either Visaya, Tagalog. Yes, sir. Okay, no problem, sir. So, yes, and then, of course, you can answer po in Bisaya and Tagalog. So, uh, But our uh, questions, some of our questions are in English din naman. So, yan. so let's start with our first question. So, uh, in the first part of your presentation, sir, you have mentioned about the mariculture parks here in northern Mindanao. So, the first question po. Uh, are there any plans to increase the number of mariculture park here in Region 10? Uh, that's a nice question, but uh, BIFAR is uh, really encouraging our private uh, uh, partners to go into uh, mariculture park because uh, it will help the, the Bureau in increasing our production. Uh, in the aquaculture side, but before they can uh, uh, they can uh, place their fish cages in certain bodies of water, the local government units of that municipality should uh, enact an ordinance uh, declaring that area as mariculture park zone, just like what we did in uh, Lupis, uh, Lupisaina and Balingasan. I see. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So yes, so um, they still need not to um, go to their LGUs then if they want to um, really go into mariculture parks or yes, to establish mariculture parks. So speaking of mariculture parks, sir, what are the criteria put out in selecting mariculture parks? 
uh, first if, before uh, before uh, we'll have we'll uh, have a go signal to certain local government units uh, it is imperative for them to request for us an underwater assessment to the area to determine if uh, that area is is really uh, feasible for uh, mariculture park activities. Um, that's where uh, the uh, establishment of uh, mariculture park will take place first. And then the others are, there are uh, uh, documentary requirements from the local government units because we also encourage the local government units to establish a uh, project management office or the uh, executive committee to really run the uh, mariculture park. Just like what we did in uh, Balingasar and Lupisayna. I see. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, sir. Now let's go to another question. This is from Mita V. Batula. So uh, actually, and from the, uh, this is from the College of Law, XU. So what are the major challenges faced by our fisher folks or farmers daw po? I think I, I have already uh, discussed in my previous slides the challenges of uh, the fisher folk. For me, as I observed uh, during my 30, past 38 years in government service, uh, what really uh, uh, come into my mind is uh, uh, the political will in the local government units in uh, also in uh, enforcing the law and also uh, the climate change and now the pandemic. So there are uh, so many factors that, uh, that beyond our control, beyond the control of humanity. Because uh, for me, I'm going to go to the house. So I can see that I'm going to support. But now, before it's really trying to extend our help, we are being, actually we are bringing the government closer to the peaceful folk. Uh, at this point in time. Dili lang karon, as we before pa, we are uh, really extending uh, what we are focusing on Kinanglanon, but uh, sometimes it is also disheartening on our part because we give them uh, 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 fishing boats uh, with engines, but uh, it ends up ilang ibaligya because their thinking is it is na may guberno yung muhatag permi but it's not dapat dili ina na ilang paglantaw so the challenge there is on how we can really really make this piece of understand that we also have a responsibility yes uh oh that's very true. And of course, thank you no, to Vfarten for still uh, making the effort and really uh, trying to help our fisher folks, especially in these trying times. So, sir, I think this is also in relation to the question earlier since um, we've already talked about the challenges that our, far, our fisher folks are facing. And then, as you've mentioned, nga, there are some unprecedented situations no, like the pandemic and also climate change uh, that we really can control. Uh, so, sir, uh, the next question is uh, with regards to the pandemic and I think you've mentioned that earlier but maybe uh, an elaboration would be okay. What are the impacts of the pandemic in the fishing and aquaculture industry? Especially then, uh, since right now uh, with the current situation that uh, some parts of Region 10 is already in ECQ, some uh, are in MECQ. So what are the impacts of this in the aquaculture and the fishing industry? Uh, actually, it has a great impact uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, livelihood for the fisher folk, uh, the problem is kinsa mo palit, kinsa mo kuha sa isda because of these restrictions. Actually, uh, we are. Uh, I have been attending uh, several national man committees called by Director Bungona, and we are talking of uh, the scarcity of fish. For us, the regional directors, uh, we really tell that there is, there is no scarcity of fish. The problem is, for example, ang atong mga traders ni atong mga fishing operators, they wanted to sell their product to Manila 
for a higher price. But the problem is, dili constant ang ilang uh, purchasing price. Then imagine, uh, just spend sila o ganang tracking, labor nila. So, nangit na may strategy, ugong saan na muna siya makatabang ni sa mga dealers na ito, saan ito mga commercial fishing boat operators. So, we offer our uh, river bonds para makuha ang, ang kaganaan siya malang sila po. But the problem now is uh, the restrictions of the local government along the way. Because uh, uh, th uh, there are local governments that uh, have different restrictions. So, I think uh, it is safe to say uh, uh, the impact really is the situation now that we are nga atong isug lang karon. So, but uh, before is not uh, wala mi muhunong o pangitag po maagi just like video that we have to find ways para matabangan na mo ang among mga fish and folk because we love the fish and folk. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that, sir. And thank you, once again, thank you, BFAR. Uh, hope no, na the situation would be better in the, uh, in the coming days. So now let's move to our next question. This is from Dana Olano. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to ask a question. About, about a month ago, I attended the IUU or the Illegal, Unreported, and Unregulated Fishing Assessment Workshop during the IFIT tool development. USAID and the University of the Philippines. This was also attended by at least five members of BFAR Region 10, as well as many other BFAR representatives all over the country. What is the status of the assessment at the moment? Has BFAR mobilized it already? Uh, as for now, we are still uh, uh, mobilizing our staff in coordination with the local government units and other law enforcement agencies, but uh, we have to uh, implement it anytime this month, anytime this month, because uh, my staff are already equipped with uh, the skills on how to do it. And we are uh, very much thankful also for uh, the first central office for providing us the uh, necessary logistics, including uh, nagbutang mi og mga uh, uh monitoring system sa kada commercial fishing boat to, for us to locate kung nakasulod ba sila sa atong municipal waters or the uh, conducted illegal fishing activities but rest assured rest assured uh, we will implement it as soon as possible yes thank you thank you so much sir for answering that question now let's go to another question. This time, this is from one of the faculty members of Xavier University College of Agriculture, Engineer uh, Elenita Doran. So Sir Boy is asking po, Swaki Row or Sea Urchin Row has big market size globally. Do we have a program to support the Swaki industry, especially in Misamis Occidental, Sapang Dalaga, and some parts in Region 10? Uh, actually, uh, we are uh, very much uh, welcome uh, for other uh, income generating projects based on the resource. Uh, but for now, uh, we are collaborating with uh, other uh, academic, the emission uh, Awan, on how we can uh, jointly uh, implement the project or how we can jointly help those uh, visual folk that are uh, really dependent on SWAKI. Because as for now, uh, there are some areas in Northern Mindanao na before, nagana uh, sila pero nagkawala. Nagkawala siya. So uh, the, the diversity over that uh, certain area is makulangan uh, siya. So rest assured, we'll have to uh, look into that Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Because, uh, yes, that is a very uh, good uh, opportunity then, no, to look into. So, uh, now let's go. Uh, this is a follow up question from Attorney Normie Batula. So, uh, regarding po, uh, this, I think, in connection to the question earlier about the pandemic. So, you mentioned that pandemic affects the livelihood. How are you or your office addressing this concern concretely daw po? Actually, uh, before is uh, giving uh, just like the four piece. 
to our Christian folk in the month of 5,000 pieces each uh, in the uh, affected Christian folk in, in Region 10. Uh, and we also uh, conducted the uh, Kadiwa uh, for us to be the one to, to sell the products of our Christian folk at a uh, an available price for uh, our consumers and we are uh, up until now we are uh, still uh, procuring a uh, uh, proper alias for our official form but rest assured uh, we are still looking on on, on other ways uh, for us to extend help to our official form yes thank you thank you so much Sir, now let's go to the next question. So this is uh, regarding the prices of our uh, aquatic uh, or aqua or fish, fishes in the market. I mean, why are prices of fishes and aquaculture products high? Will this further increase in the coming years? Um, that is not all, uh, happening only in Region 10. Actually, it is happening uh, all over the Philippines. So in, in in several months that I attended, uh, we uh, think of strategies on how to, to solve the uh, increasing prices of commodities. One of which is, uh, our traders want to sell their products in Manila. The problem is the high cost of transport. So BIFAR is uh, providing uh, our uh, repair bans in the region para po makuha ang kwarto. Meaning, refer bonds, kami na ang mag-tubil pa doon sa Manila. Ang hila lang is to, to, one, to supply the fish needed. needed. And then, uh, also in the, in the aquaculture side, ang nakita na mo is, uh, for example, ka na sa itong fish cages, ang kwa magod, pinakatako nga, nga part sa gasohon niya is Mostly 70% of the personal cost comes from the fees. Uh, wala mi control kung sa ano mo na siya. So, but uh, we already conducted uh, several talks with uh, uh, feed companies on how also they can help. And uh, SIFDIC is also, uh, and the other research institutions, uh, they are also uh, studying uh, using uh, uh, raw materials as fees, but the problem is the sustainability of the supply of the raw materials. So, but uh, we are really, really uh, finding ways on on how we can pwede lang maabusubusan ang presyo sa ato mga kuwan, mga isda na to. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now, let's go uh, to the next question. So, uh, this question is Yes. What are the strategies of the government to re reverse the decreasing fish production? So as what was, I think, uh, discussed earlier, nga, no, um, there is a decrease in the production of fishes uh, this year. So ano po, what are the strategies now to, to, uh, to reverse this? Uh, there are uh, uh, several approaches to to, to reverse the uh, declining uh, production of fish. Uh, one is uh, other stakeholders or the private sector should also uh, help. One is uh, the increasing uh, fuel. So, kung pwede lang, mag ang ba ang ang, ang, ang sector o ang sila po nga service provider because magunsa man ang, ang ato mga mananagat nga ang isda is wala pa na siya price libre man na siya maka, maka, maka price wala na siya kung itong factors related to the catching of fish is tag-as for example kanang mga nets tag-as po na siya kanang fuel number one is fuel really na siya napay mga mga subsistence ni mga pangatag sa pisa po, mga bungas. Yan na nga. So, uh, for me, sa before, no, uh, there are factors na pwede buhato na mo 
But magkusan ng factors nga sa amo ah. Kung there are also other factors nga dili siya what? Dili siya uh, kuan para sa mapaubos na to. So I think siguro is uh, mag-istorya ang bawat sector uh, so stakeholders para kung saan na siya. Yes, that's true. So, the, the, as, uh, as what uh, RD have said, though, uh, there are a lot of factors that we need to consider. So, the ganjud ka ayo factors. So, yes, and and as what you've said, nga, sir, important yun nga magstorya. So, communication is the key. Okay, now let's go to the next question. I think this is um, somewhat related then to the previous question. What are the policies and programs? Oh no, hindi pa pala, sorry. Our, we have a huge gap between supply and demand in 2020. So yes, I think as what the graph uh, the graph you've or the table you've shown earlier, uh, there is a high demand but uh, the supply is a bit low. So what are the strategies of the government to meet the fish food demand? Uh, actually, uh, that data that I presented is comes from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Ang ilang mga god is uh, dili ang whole na scenario when you uh, when you collect data in relation to production. Uh, so what are we doing now? Uh, we are now in talking terms with the uh, PSA on how we can marry those areas on production na dili nila makover. So maybe by uh, by the next quarter. Uh, we can uh, uh, show to you that there is already an increase in production. So, so, so data lang na siya, ma'am, actually. Okay. Na okay. it, it also happens to other regions. Mm -hmm. So, may mga observation. So, BIPAR and PAC are also are now in uh, talking terms on how we can do. Okay. Okay. okay, that's good to know po, no? Uh, now let's go to the next question. Okay, so we are ranked high in prawn production, squid, squid sardines, and what are the reasons now po behind this? So, uh, mataas yung ranking sa squid and sardines and ano, uh, uh, prawn, tiger prawn in particular. So, reasons behind this, sir? Uh, actually, uh, Region 10 is a prawn producing region. Because of Lanao, huge areas of fish ponds in Lanao and Misama is Occidental. Uh, for the sardines, we are a recipient of the closest zone from uh, Sambuanga. Because uh, sardines are migratory in nature. So we are very thankful. And uh, I'm also uh, requesting all or suggesting all the local government units to at least uh, enact an ordinance uh, closing for three days uh, their municipal waters for, for it to to regain the kung sa may isda na nakakaroon diha. So, the effect of that is uh, because of the close season that is implemented by uh, Region 9 Sambuanga from uh, December to February. So, kung mag-open na sila muna ang, ang sardines because it is uh, migratory in nature. So, muat to po sa land. Not only in, in Region 10, but also in Caranga or other regions. So, that is the reason na dato uh, uh, kayo o kuwan na mag-close is on that. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for clearing that up. Now, uh, for the next question, um how okay we okay so pala, sorry sir we have a huge gap between supply and demand ano tapos na pala sorry po what are the policies and programs of the government to prevent conversion of aquaculture production areas to other land use that's a good question uh for me i, I am also observing that one because before um the Ifeli areas uh, for 25 years among the issue for uh, a corporation or an individual, ilang mong gumpatituluhan without the uh, knowledge of the farm. Ang upon po is they convert it to a subdivision or or anything uh, in their favor. But 
before now is is really strict on implementing this uh, regulation uh, in coordination with the, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources because they are the ones who can convert uh, which one areas to other uh, usage. So uh, we are now uh, coordinating within our own how we can do with that uh, issues right now. So rest assured, uh, it will uh, in the future wala na conversion na may tago kung magamit pa lang yun for this span uh, purposes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hopefully, uh, we are also uh, would want that to happen. Ano? Uh, mm -hmm. Wala na yung makonvert na mga fish ponds to subdivisions or something like that. Uh, now, sir, let's go to the next question po. Uh, how do BFAR settle conflicts related to municipal boundaries? Uh, to make it clear, uh, the agency that can uh, delineate municipal waters is the NAMRIA under the DNR. Uh, also, BFAR has nothing to do with illegal fishing activities within municipal waters because it is now under the jurisdiction management of the local government units. So the role of BFAR in uh, municipal waters is only during their technical assistance by providing technical trainings to their technicians. Then here comes by next year, the Mandanas, where BFAR will uh, uh, also will devolve functions, including the budget to the local government units. The question is, the, are the LGUs ready to accept the responsibility? It is the question now, <laughs> So our suggestion is uh, for the coastal local uh, municipalities in Region 10, they should enact an ordinance creating a fisheries office within their coastal municipalities. Because remember, Region 10 is a coastal region. So the fisheries ilang responsibility. But we are still there to uh, help Technically, kung sa projects ang gusto nila, o technically, mo-train sa ilang mga technicians. But on uh, resolving conflict, local government na na. I see. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, that explanation. No? And yes, um, uh, there are really a lot of changes in, uh, in all the government agencies, especially with the Mandanas happening. Na. Yes, so, yes. So hopefully our LGU, especially those of our viewers who are watching from the different local government units, uh, hope then on, uh, you will uh, uh, listen to what uh, Sir Ar uh, Sir Tidor Bacolod have said no? and, uh, and all his suggestions kanina. Now, uh, let's go to the next question. Po. Uh, this is regarding... Uh, aquaculture products, fish and aquaculture products. So what are the programs of BFAR to ensure the food safety and quality of our fish and aquaculture products here in Region 10? Uh, can you repeat the question, ma'am? Uh, what are the programs of BFAR to ensure the food safety and quality of our fish and aquaculture products here in Region 10? Actually, for uh, aquaculture projects, uh, we implement the good aquaculture practice, wherein uh, it uh, it embodies uh, uh, the methods that the a certain uh, grower will follow for it for them to produce a quality product. So we are now. Uh, Sige namin karon o pag-paristro o ka ng mga aquaculture farms. Telling them and train them on how, on what they are supposed to do to raise a good quality product. And then BIFAR also is conducting a stringent and strict inspection of all fisheries products, especially aquaculture products coming from different uh, source and also we are uh, inspecting uh, products for export, especially for export, but not only for export, but also the domestic one 
because daily we're conducting a uh, daily market uh, uh, monitoring in every uh, markets in Cagayan de Oro. Uh, by monitoring, is also we also conduct seminars or telling uh, the vendors on the proper way of uh, preserving the fish in our uh, markets. Rest assured, uh, before is really doing what we can do to uh, to give uh, our consumers a quality fish in coordination also with the local government units. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, yes, we really appreciate uh, the efforts uh, that BFAR is doing. So now I think this is the last question. Po. What are the impacts of the Pangil, Pangil Bay Bridge Pangil Bay Bridge on the fishes, fisheries resources in the Pangil Bay area? Uh, actually, uh, it has some impacts. But before... Before the uh, uh, the start, the uh, construction of the uh, Pangil Bay, uh, the government, the local government of Lanao, and uh, the contractor itself uh, visited my office uh, for for them to seek advice on on uh, uh, the possible impact of their project in. In Bangil Bay, uh, before the, uh, the the bridge, there are some factors that has a great impact in the resource of Bangil Bay. One of which is uh, the siltation. The siltation due to mining from uh, from the mountains. So, ang 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 resulta ang gadawat is ang ang Bangil Bay. Then the other one is the proliferation of sanggab, which is an illegal fishing activity. Yeah, pati tong mga gagmay, sumakuhaong api. So before and the local government units is started approving three years ago, five years ago, those illegal sanggab. But sad to note, until now, na apa because some of which, ang owners ato is, uh, some officials of the local government units. But uh, Governor and Congressman Di Maporo, uh, uh, na po may awal ago to, to kana ibalik na mo ang Pangil Bay Development Council. But for, uh, this time, it should be in GU lead because the activity na uh, among good sa Mispalote, so it should be lead by the local government units. Pareho sa Dinis Makalar Bay, uh, local government may one, may nang lead. Ang BFAR is only uh, assisting them technically. But uh, ang impact yun is nag-decline na mga ng one, nag-decline na mga itong resource uh, sa Pangil Bay. Uh, ako lang silang ginan, just ayaw lang tanduga kung whatever resource is left, just like the corals, the sea grasses, Eh, magka, magkalot mong ibo, maglubong mong ibo po ha. So, let us first dive the areas uh, where uh, magbutang mong mga poste. Then, uh, the result of which uh, there is a joint uh, assessment the area with the DNR and uh, the, the contractor. So, it, it resulted to what? Katong area nga Ya, um, magian supposedly sa ilang kuan is ilang gibalin to those ilang nga was sila mapiktuan because I am very serious kung ilang nga kuan, pabayaro na kuan sila. Just like what I did sa kanang mga coal power plants na to, pabayaro na po sila kuan. So, nana lang, ako lang ina sila, please, please, ato sang kuanon, kanang nabilin diha, ato sang nang protektahan because there are uh, many people, especially the fisher folk, that are really direct dependent. So whatever resource na uh, nabilin pa. So Ambifar is really uh, implementing kung kung sagi dili dapat, dili na siya dapat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And we really, uh, and I hope no, that um, Pangal Bay will be restored pa uh, 
uh, because yes, as you've said, daghan pa kayo far uh, fisher folks ang uh, ang murag, ang ilang panginabuhi diha paghihapon. So I hope that mm-hmm. Um, of course, in uh, with the help of BFAR, uh, we can resolve those issues regarding Pangil Bay. So now, sir, uh, those are the, our questions, but we have a last request lang po. So, of course, um, all our viewers are, are from the different sectors. We have from the academe. We also have farmers from the um, LGUs. So, we would like to ask you for a message lang to all of our viewers, especially since we also have students who are watching uh, right now in our lives. So, uh, mes- uh, inspiring or parting message po for them. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, I would like to extend my thanks to Civil University for inviting me in this activity, being the resource person. I hope uh, meron akong, ano, meron akong na, nabigay na kaalaman sa inyo. Uh, then I I would just like to request everybody that we should be responsible to to maintain or to safeguard our environment, especially our resource sa atong kadagatan. Because remember, uh, we, are, we are all just uh, stewards by the resource given to us by, by our God. So, let us be responsible. Uh, I just would like also to to request by heart the students because you are the future. You can also depend on whatever resource that is left for you to enjoy in the future. So please also uh, uh, tell your your friends, your relatives to really be responsible. Sa unsa pa na bilin nato kung ano pa yung naiwan na resource na nilapastangan ng mo, no, mga tao na namatay na. So, rest assured, BIFAR is, is really, really there to extend our help to you. Ito lang. Kung meron kayo mga fish pans dyan na, no, mag, mag, ano kayo ng tilapia, just tell us. We will give you free of charge tilapia fingerlings. So, sa akin lang is, uh, for all of us, you have to be responsible for the future, for the next generation to enjoy. Not for us now, but for the next generation to come. So, for that, uh, thank you, and uh, let us all keep safe. God bless, and thank you once again. Mm-hmm.